when we were first told about um, when, when we first went to the first clinic, the first um, we would go to the children's clinic here in, in Tucson. The first appointment we had with them, that's what I asked. So, because normally, I mean, any other time that I've ever taken my child to the doctor, they said, this is what they have. Then, you know, your next question is, okay, so what do we need to do? And I thought naively at that time, well, you'll, there's some medicine or something we can do that's going to make him better. Um, and they were like, well, there is no treatment and there is no cure. And the thing they told me at the time was keep him active, but not overactive. That's all they said to me. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not real sure what you mean by that, you know? And they're like, well, you know, keep him as active as he can, running around, playing, participating as much as you can, but don't let him overdo it because that could cause more damage to the muscle. And that's really the only thing they told me. Um, so we started, but you know, he, he started taking uh, speech therapy in, in school and then physical therapy and some occupational therapy. Um, but really, and, and still to this day, we've tried a lot of different things. Um, so it's, it's, you know, again, it's a progressive disease. So he started off until, I think you were, how old were you when you got your AFOs? Maybe third grade? Third grade, yeah. So when he was about seven or eight, um, he started having foot drop on his right foot. And they put... Yeah. Oh, oh, right. Oh, oh, oh. So they put an AFO. He had one AFO on um, his right foot, and then his left foot started turning in. So about a year later, he started wearing AFOs on both both feet, and he wore AFOs for several years. Then when he was ten, the right sixth grade. I no, in your fifth grade when you got your first surgery. Oh yes. Yeah. So when he was about ten, then. His, his left foot was rolling so severely that it was pressing on the FOs and was causing a lot of um, pain and some sores. So they did a tendon transfer to keep, so it was the first surgery he had, he went in and they transferred some tendons. Uh, they moved the tendon over so that the foot wouldn't roll. And then he was back in his AFOs and then it was still rolling again. So then he had a second surgery um, when he was in the sixth grade, that same foot, they lengthened the tendon and he was in a cast for a while. And then, um, and then after that, he never, he started using a wheelchair for long distances. Like he could still walk um, in the house and around his classroom, but between classes or if we went shopping or anything where he had to walk any sort of distance, he used a wheelchair. What about the, the walker? Well, he used a walker. He progressed to a walker first, and then he started using a wheelchair just for long distances when he was probably around 11 or 12. And then, um, and then just got to the, or he, and then he could stand, but then he couldn't walk. And then it got to the point where he had to use, he has to use a wheelchair full time now. So he's been in this chair since eighth grade, right? So. Seven, seven. So since he's about 12 or 13, he's been in a wheelchair pretty much all, full time. And then just recently, he had scoliosis, very severe scoliosis. So he just had um, spinal fusion surgery where he, they went in and they put two rods in his back and then they connect with the screw to every vertebrae and then down into his pelvis. So he just had that in August. And with that, the surgery was necessary because the scoliosis was so bad, it was putting pressure on his heart and his lungs. So he did the surgery, but it's reduced his functionality even more because before he would compensate a lot by, by bending over and bracing himself and he can't do that any longer. So now he even has less use of his hands, um, like feeding himself, brushing his teeth, things like that are more difficult now and than they were prior to the surgery. Mm -hmm.